Hello, I am Dr. Millicent Thomas. In this video, I would like to explain some applications of the systems of linear equations. Let's see the dif different applications of the systems of linear equations. The applications are polynomial curve fitting, network analysis, electrical network analysis, traffic or water flow, and also balancing the chemical equations. Let's take the first example for polynomial curve fitting. There are five points given and we are asked to fit a polynomial using these five points. So since there are five points, we would like to have a fourth degree equation. If there are two points, you'll have a linear equation. If I have three points, I'll have a quadratic equation. So here I have got five points, so it will be a fourth degree equation. So let us take a polynomial of fourth degree P of X, which is A4 X to the 4 plus A3 X cubed plus A2 X squared plus A1 X plus A0. So if I plug in these five points, since it passes through all these five, when I substitute these five points, I get an equation P of X where A0, A1, A2, A3, A4 can be obtained by solving this system of equations, those uh, systems in, uh, in terms of A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. We can solve that using uh, the Gauss-Jordan's method or uh, de determinant method or graphing the calculator or maybe even using a uh, TI calculator. So if I am using my graphing calculator, I will enter all these values under started it, x values under L1, y values under L2, and I will select stat calc number 7 to get the fourth degree equation. So when I select number 7, I get the fourth degree equation whose coefficients A, B, C, D, E are known. So this equation what I get is similar to the one what I get by just solving those equations. The second example is about network analysis. Usually the networks are composed of branches and junctions which are used as models in field of economics, traffic analysis, electrical engineering, etc. even in water flows. Suppose if 25 is the input and x1 and x2 are the output, then you'll have an equation, balanced equation, x1 plus x2, the output must be equal to the input. The same case whether it is the water inflow or uh, traffic flow, whatever it is, you have the same method, x1 here in this case, in this diagram, we have x1 plus x2 equal to 25. Let us see this in uh, example where I have got four, five knots and the traffic inflow and outflow at each node is there. So there are five junctions. So for each junction, the traffic inflow will be equal to the traffic outflow. So using that, say for example, if I'm taking junction one, I have 20 is the in, input and x1 and x2 are the output. So x1 plus x2 must be equal to 20. The same way we get those equations for all the junctions and then we can take the augmented matrix, find the reduced row echelon form which is the gauss jordans elimination method. You can find what is your x1, x2, x3 and x4, x4 and x5. So the last equation is 0. So by treating it, it, is, uh, it has a number of values here. By treating x5 as t, this x4 will be t plus 10. So likewise, you can find x3, x2, and x1. In this example, let us talk about the electrical network. So we have two junctions, junction 1 and junction 2. We are applying the law of Kirchhoff's. Here I1 plus I2 must be, so I1 plus I3 must be equal to I2 for junction 1 or junction 2. And if you are taking two different paths, you take all those 
R1 times I1 plus R2 using the second law you get R1 I1 plus R2 I2 is 3 I1 plus 2 I2 which is 7. The same way you get the next one. So you have three different equations in terms of I1 I2 I3. You can use the reduced row echelon form of it and find the value for I1 I2 I3. If we are talking about the water flow or traffic flow, you if the flow is like this say for the first one we will have 600 is the input x1 plus x3 is the output x1 and x2 x3 are the output so for all those six junctions we can find the equations like this take the augmented matrix find the reduced row echelon form so that you can get the seven values x1 x2 x3 x7 and a specific value when x6 is equal to 0 and x7 is equal to 0, that is when s equal to 0, t equal to 0, we can find the solutions. And also when x6 equal to 0, when x is 0 and x7, which is t, is negative 1000, we can also find the value for this. Let's take the last example as balancing chemical equations. Let us see the sodium hydroxide react, reacts with sulfuric acid and it yields sodium sulfate and water. So using this equation, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid that yields sodium sulfate plus water H2O which is not balanced. So we have to balance this equation. We have to find the unknowns W, X, Y and Z. So let us take each component separately, sodium separately, oxygen, hydrogen and sulfur and try to balance this. If I am taking sodium, Na, then on the left hand side I have just one Na, so W, one W and on my right hand side I have got um, Y Na2, so I have got 2Y. And the same way if I am taking oxygen, on my left hand side, the first one I have got WO, so 1W. And the second term, from the second term it is XO4, so it is 4X equal to. On my right hand side, I have YO4, so it is 4Y, and ZO, so it is Z. So the same way for the hydrogen, and um, I can get the value for the sulfur S. And try to get the augmented matrix and make use of the reduced row echelon form. You can find what the values of x, y, z and w are. Once when we know the value for x, y, z and w, we can substitute and find, compare, um, complete the balancing the equation. So in this video, we talked about the polynomial curve fitting, network analysis, network analysis in electrical also, and also we saw what is the water flow and traffic flow. We also saw how to balance the chemical equation using the systems of linear equation. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and thank you.